Thank How you, are we Tyler. doing? Well, uh, Chrissy and I have been looking forward to this for a long time. I sort of feel I'm returning to the scene of the crime when I come here because my wife was a member of this church and I was an itinerant minister who stole her. So um, Pastor Ian is forgiving. He mightn't look it, but he's very forgiving. And uh, stand up, honey. This is my beautiful wife. And, and we'll be admitted. She's going to probably make me pay for that later. But um, this church really ministered to her. And a, and a huge part of her testimony that we sh have shared all over the world is how much the love and, and the presence of God and the, and, and, and the love of God's people in this house changed her life. And so the world is hearing about the good things that come from this church. Amen. Just before I start, we have some CDs up the back. Um, the Lord's really placed on our hearts. In, this is a church that understands the power of the Word of God. Amen. And, um, you know, it's, it's one thing to have the Word of God on your head. It's another thing to have it written on your heart. And so we have uh, a couple of CDs of sung scripture to get the Word placed deeply into your heart. And we've had testimonies of healings and, and from all over the world where people have just got the Word of God in a, pre, in a sense of worship and just let the Word wash over them day and night. We've also got some instrumentals, some other worship CDs. Say this all the time. All the money goes to the hungry children, our hungry children. <laughs> Praise God. Could you turn in your Bibles, please, to, to Psalm chapter 100? Now, I, I warned Pastor Ian there better be a clock up the back because when you start talking about praise and worship, I get a little bit excited. We, we, we did a, um, four one-hour sermons uh, services this week at a church, and Pastor Ian asked me to do every single one of them today, so look at the person next to you. You're going to be sitting there for four... No, I'm joking. It's okay. But do you realize praise and worship is not just for the musical? Yeah. You know, I know, look, some of us are more musical than others. Seriously, like the man who God used to mentor me in an international worship ministry is Cole Stringer. Now, listen, they used to get up before we'd minister together and say, Peter is mentored by Cole. And people thought that was musical. And my album sales plummeted. <laughs> because you don't want to hear Cole sing. Cole is an incredible man of God, preaches all over the world. But he says, he says, you know, singers run in my family. They have to. Because they, they, I feel musicality leaving my body when I stand too close to him by osmosis. He's not musical. But he knows how to worship God Amen. with all of his heart. And it, I, I think the Lord did that on purpose because for too long, I th people have thought worship is just for the musical. And praise is just for the musical. And I, I thank God for the standard of praise and worship in the house of God today. I mean, you, you have a wonderful worship team. Didn't they do, the, they do an incredible job this morning? Give them a hand. They did a fantastic job. And I praise God for that. But this is not them doing something for us to just sit and watch. And I thank God for all of the gifts in the body of Christ. And, and look... Hey, we need the evangelists. I love the evangelistic gifts. And I see the great man. We just watched a great general, um, Reverend Billy Graham, who just went home to be with the Lord in the, in the last week or so. And, and that man led millions to Christ. And I thank God for that. But do you realize there'll be a day when no one else needs to be told about Jesus? Do you realize that? And, and, and I thank God for the teacher that can open the Word of God and bring such an incredible revelation. But do you realize some, one day we're going to be standing face to face with the Word of God? I thank God for that. I thank God for the ministries that, that, that feed the hungry and, and help the broken. But when we're in heaven, there's, there isn't going to be any hungry. There isn't going to be any broken. But you know what? There's something we're all going to be doing for the rest of eternity. And that's praising and worshiping God. Can we read this scripture? Psalm 100 says, Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence with singing. Know that the Lord, He is God. It is He who made us and not we ourselves. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. Enter into His gates with thanksgiving and into His courts with praise. Be thankful to Him and bless His name. For the Lord is good and His mercy is everlasting and His truth endures for all generations. 
Father, I just thank you today that every person in this, in the sound of my voice, will get a revelation today that they are called to be a worshipper. And we just give you praise in Jesus' name. I'll have a friend of mine, Pastor Tom Ingalls, who has the Psalmody Ministry, which is blessing people all over the planet with teaching on praise and worship. I love what he says in his ministry. He says, every believer, a worshiper. Do you realize if, you know, if we were standing here today and the Queen of England came, there would be a certain protocol that would be right. You know, if we had a head of state or, or even when we have a great man or woman of God, we've got Brother Jerry coming in a few months. So, you know, there, there's a protocol that even the most unlearned person seems to understand. You know, there's one protocol to come into the presence of the Lord. And that's with thanksgiving and praise. That it's right and just for we of his people to be people that praise him and worship him. I see people all the time and they go to me, what's the will of God for my life? I'd like you quickly please to turn to the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. If I get a bit excited and go a bit fast, it's because there's a lot stirring on around in here. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 16 to 18 says, Rejoice always. You know, we could stop and have church just there. Rejoice when everything's going right. No. Rejoice when my bank balance is overflowing with more than enough. No. Rejoice when my body feels strong and there's no symptoms. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing in everything. Now, it doesn't say because of everything. Do you realize we live in a broken world sometimes and there are things that we face, they're not the will of God. If you're facing sickness and disease in your life today, that is not God's will for you in Jesus' name. If you, if you, are, if you have got facing trials, of, you might be having lack or strife in your relationships and your marriage or problems with your children, that is not God trying to teach you something. I say with, in Jesus' name, that is not God's will for your life. But not because of those things, but in those things, we can give thanks. It says, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do you realize the world is negative? You ever see that? Do you ever turn on the news and say, we just want to tell you how great our politicians are. And how thankful for we, it's all, it doesn't matter what they did. It's, it's seriously, if someone came up with a cure for cancer, they'd be doing a news boot. All oncologists put out of work. <laughs> seriously, the world is so negative and it can come into the church. I'm going to say something that might hit a little bit home. But do you know what? I, I don't think it's a, a coincidence that God compares the church as his bride. Do you realize that when we are in a marriage, if remember you first get married, oh my gosh, it's all butterflies and rainbows. It's fantastic. But you're two people. Stuff happens. Don't look at, some of your halos are just getting a little bit crooked. And it, don't look at me in that tone of voice. There's stuff sometimes. I know that there's days where my wife just goes, oh, help me, Jesus. Oh, help me. To, I, we just love it. Where we'll be at our worship, our book resource table and, you know, selling CDs and people go, oh, my goodness, you just must just like float around the house with scriptures flowing out of your mouth to create such wonderful anointed music. And my wife's like, oh, my gosh, if you only knew. <laughs> Do you realize that we, we, we've got to just be thankful and grateful for each other? Are you grateful for this church? You know, too many people go home and have pasta for lunch. <laughs> pastor Ian and Pastor Diane. We've got to stop that. You know what? That's like we say to our kids, I don't care what happens out in the world, not in this house. Let this be a house of thanksgiving and praise. Let this be a place where we talk people up to who they are in Christ, not pull them down to the lowest common denominator. You know, God wants us to be people of thanksgiving. And, you know, there's such a revelation of grace in the body of Christ now. Do you realize more people know who they are in Christ now than ever before? 
You know, 20, 30 years ago when some of us first started to hear Brother Copeland, Brother Jerry, Brother Hagen talk about our righteousness in Christ, we were considered fruit loops. I've had people say in big, I won't name churches because, you know, bless God. But they go, you guys have been saying this for years. And I thank God that we understand that by the grace of God, we can partake of all of God's promises. Every promise in the Word of God is yours. Yes and amen in Christ. You are now accepted in the Beloved. You can now come boldly into the throne room of grace to receive mercy and find grace to help you in your time of need purely because of the blood of Jesus. That's worth giving thanks for. Amen. And when we have people go, oh, God, more grace. Do you know, but uh, you do a study. The Greek word for thank, thanks, is charis. It's the same word as grace. Do you realize many times in the Bible when he's saying give thanks, it's the same word as grace. To be full of grace, you've got to be full of thanksgiving. Do you realize because it's all done in Christ? I think that came out. But Louise was um, singing it out in worship. She said, it's finished. It's done. The old covenant was about you do this, 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 and this, and this will happen. The new covenant is all about Jesus did this, this, and this. Therefore, this blessing will come to you in Jesus. Do you realize praise is the language of faith? People, you know, it's very easy to just quote a scripture. But you I, you, I can tell very, very quickly where some, an area where someone has received by faith. Because even if they don't see it, you can't help but be thankful. I, I know a, um, a ministry couple, a lot of you would have heard of Mark and Trina Hankins, have an incredible ministry. And, and Trina was diagnosed with a brain tumor. Now these are people that have traveled the world preaching faith preaching faith and here they are in a situation in a hospital where a doctor is saying you have a brain tumor and you know what they did just for 24 hours mark told me this he said all we did is we just began to thank jesus we just began to thank God. We began to renew our minds to the goodness of God. We just begin to praise Him. We just begin to glorify Him. We just thanked Him for every single thing we could thank Him for. We thanked Him for the blood of Jesus. We thanked Him for filling us with the Holy Ghost. We thanked Him for the Word of God. We thanked Him for the people in our church. They just began to thank Him. And to the point where, you know, do you realize what praise and worship does? It takes your mind off you and puts it on him. Do you realize that? Joyce Meyer said something a few years ago that sort of rocked me to my core. She said, most Christians spend more time with the devil than they do with God. And I'm like, what? And she began to share how early in her walk with the Lord, she'd spend a whole time binding the devil. Binding the devil. devil. Oh, the devil's attacking me. The devil, binding the devil. Binding the, and I, I went through that a little bit myself. Do you, do, you, do you remember? Some of us who are a bit older remember the spiritual warfare movement. Now, please don't get upset. I'm not against that. But people were dressing up in commando gear and getting up in planes to pull down the principalities. And we'd have meetings and we'd just scream our lungs out. like a, And I could never work out, do you bind the devil or do you lose him? So I'd bind him for a while, and when that stopped working or didn't work, I'd, 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 I'd lose him. And, and I spent my whole world focused on the devil. But I want to show you something from the Word of God. I've given the guys scriptures, but I think I've totally messed it up here, but that's all right. Turn to uh, Ephesians chapter 1. There is a warfare. And, and Pastor Ian... Uh, we were talking on the phone and he's been preaching this great series on success in life. And, you know, you can't have success without praise and worship. Do you realize that? We, we were with um, Christy's sister and her husband. And my brother-in-law loves boats, loves boats. And he was talking about how his, how his um, mates uh, sort of borrowed his boat while he wasn't home. And they took it out for a lovely little burn. Oh, that would have been a great time. And they filled it with petrol. And I thought, yeah, hey, we're all cool. No harm, no foul, all good. Only trouble is it's a two-stroke engine. 
They just put petrol in it. Now, for those of you who don't understand, a two-stroke engine, if you don't put oil in with the petrol, A, it runs really badly, and secondly, you blow up the engine. And so guess what? The engine blew up. And you realize there's people all over the world trying to get success in life. There are people, with, they're, they're spending, they're working hundreds of hours a week and, and building these financial empires or, 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 or great careers in the entertainment industry or or, and doing everything that seems like should bring them joy, but it's bringing them nothing but emptiness. Because just like that two-stroke engine, without the oil of God in our lives, without the oil of the Holy Ghost, you were made to worship God. Do you realize that? And I find when people, the more they praise Him, the more they worship Him, the more they focus on His goodness and His glory, you know what? There's less I find I need to pray for. It's like you charge the atmosphere of your world with miracles when you're a praiser and a worshiper of God. So Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 7. It says, in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, which he made abound to us in all wisdom and prudence. Do you know our redemption was the greatest act of genius of God? The Bible says, had the rulers known, they would have not crucified the Lord of glory. The devil thought he'd won when he crucified Jesus. But do you know what? The day that Jesus paid the price for your sin, you no longer became the problem. Sin no longer became the problem because he himself became our our sin and he gave us his righteousness. All of a sudden, the devil could accuse all he wanted and we could stand before his presence as the righteousness of God, clothed in his glory, cleansed by the blood of the lamb, all because of what Jesus has done. All of a sudden, every time the devil would say, but you deserve this bad stuff, I could say, but you know what? Jesus took all of the punishment for my weakness upon himself and he gave me all of the reward that he paid for. It was genius. It was the absolute genius of God. And it says, and he made a bound towards us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself. That in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him. Do you know what? The word says there's no longer male nor female, slave nor free, Jew nor Gentile. We are one in Christ. If you've accepted Jesus today and you come before him, looking to receive of his mercy and his grace and his goodness, he doesn't look at you and go, well, are you this? Are you that? He says, You're in Christ. All the promises are yes and amen. Now quickly turn over to Ephesians chapter 3. In verse 10 it says, To the intent now that the manifold wisdom of God may be made known by the church to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places according to the eternal purpose which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. Our warfare now is not to just bind the devil. And I'm not, you know, there's some stuff sometimes, yeah, you need to tell him back off in Jesus' name. But when we proclaim, we are the redeemed. We are the blessed. We are the favored of God. We are the anointed of God. And we begin to proclaim his righteousness and his glory and the finished work of the cross. We are proclaiming and shaking the heavens. Do you realize that you charge... Just quickly go back to chapter 2 while you're there. Sorry, guys, I didn't give you the scripture. It says, In which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. Now, the Bible talks about the devil as like the prince of the air or the prince of the atmosphere. But you don't realize as a Christian, you're supposed to take back the authority over that atmosphere in your life. Do you realize, did you feel the atmosphere change in this room as we began to proclaim the goodness of God? When we began to proclaim, we are no longer slaves to fear. We are children of God. 
When we began to proclaim that the king is here and we began to focus, not, hey, I'm, I can guarantee not everybody here in this room has everything perfect in their life or everything that, some things that don't need adjustments or God to move in their life. But for a few moments, our eyes were not focused on what we lacked, but what we had, and that's Jesus. And as we began to proclaim that into the atmosphere, the heavens were shaken and things begin to shift. Stuff begins to happen when we proclaim over our world, we are blessed, we are favored, we are the redeemed, we are the healed in Jesus' name, we are the blessed in Jesus' name. And as we praise Him and glorify Him, we charge the atmosphere of our world with miracles. You realize so many times we read of the great healing evangelists, but before they ever ministered, they were very specific about charging the atmosphere of the room they were ministering in with the right with people praising God lifting up his name glorifying God because that changes everything you know we've had times with our kids just because you're a minister doesn't mean you get this free pass and your kids just do every single thing you they that you've ever asked them to do or and so we've had issues and there's been times I've just gone into their rooms and I've just lifted my hands and I've just gone to go, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your presence. And I've just begun to thank God and glorify Him. And I've charged the atmosphere of their room with praise and worship and the presence of God. You know, so many of us are charging the atmosphere of our world with negativity, with criticism, with lack. Start charging the atmosphere of your house with praise. You know, get the, put some praise and worship music on and just begin to thank Him, just begin to glorify Him. You know, I heard this said, when we pray, we step into God's presence. But when we praise and we worship Him, He steps into ours. If you want to have the presence of God in your atmosphere, well, you just start praising and worshiping Him. He can't stay away. It says He dwells amongst the praises. He be, we've built a tabernacle for him to dwell in his fullness and his glory. Do you know the word glory? One of the words for glory is waiting. It's like the full, weighty presence of God and all that comes with it. Weighty and heavy in healing. Weighty and heavy in prosperity. Weighty and heavy in, in deliverance and joy. All of that comes when we just begin to praise him and worship him. It changes everything. Just Turn, turn in your Bibles. Yeah, okay, Isaiah 54. We won't turn. Yeah, quickly, 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 quick, real quick, real quick. I love Isaiah 53. Talks about the great redemption we have in Jesus. It talks about he was pierced for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him and by his stripes we were healed. It's totally focused on everything that Jesus has done for you right now if you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. But I love what it says in Isaiah 54. It says, Sing, O barren, you have not born. Break forth into singing and cry aloud. You have not labored with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married woman, says the Lord. Do you know what? In a situ you see some people in life, they're just naturally healthy. You see some people in life, they were born with the, not just the silver spoon, maybe the gold spoon or the, or the platinum spoon in their mouth. And they don't have the financial challenges that you might be facing. You see some people and they've just got the natural ability in relationships and to have favor with people in a natural way. But the Bible talks about if you're barren in an area, sing. If you're lacking in your finances, sing. If you're lacking in healing in your bodies, begin to sing, praise Him. Because when you do that, the promise of God makes that more sure than the person that just has it naturally. Do you realize all the billionaires in the world today, everything could change in a second. But your blessing is not connected to the, the economies of the world. You know, all the people that feel so healthy and fine are great now. But I tell you what, your health is due to the fact that Jesus himself 2,000 years ago was beaten and whipped and took by his stripes, you were healed. It's not connected to the bird flu or the swine flu or anything else or any epidemic. You are healed because of Jesus. 
So even if you feel, well, I've, I've always struggled this, in this area, begin to praise him. Begin to thank him. Sing, O Baron. Sing. And I find as people begin to do that, the reality of what Jesus has done becomes more real to them than the challenge that they're facing. Quickly in your Bibles, quickly, I'll finish with this, Acts chapter 16. I really pray you come back tonight. I really do. Not because Christy and I are here, but something powerful happens when we just charge the atmosphere of a room with the praises of God. You realize that we're charging it with miracles. And we just give Him time. You know, I realized once, you know, I'm asking God, God, how do I do this? How do I do that? How do I do that? How do I do that? And he says, well, you're the one doing all the talking. (laughs) But when I just spend a few moments focused on him, a lot of the things I'm praying for, looking direction for, and needing answers for just happen. So here we have a situation, and I'll finish with this. Philippians chapter, ah, Philippians, sorry, Acts chapter 16, verse 25. It says, at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. Do you realize how powerful an evangelistic tool true praise and worship is? I see people all over that they want to have an a, a impacting church that reaches souls and gets unpe- And so they, they, they sort of remove praise and worship. But I've, I've gone into churches with lots of new believers. And, I, and, I, and I've made a point of asking, what do you think of the service? Because I've been saved over 30 years. You sort of lose that first impact. Every one of them, every one of them said, you know what, I don't know what it is, but when the singing starts, I feel something. That's a tangible presence of God that happens when God's people begin to praise Him. People are, li- You know what, people s- know... The people you're trying to witness Jesus to know that you're going through the same challenges that they do. But when they see that you have a different spirit, when they see that their lives are full of fear, but no matter what happens, that you've got that assurance, that living hope inside of you. Do you know what? It doesn't matter what I see right now. That's subject to change. But what's not subject to change is the promises and the Word of God. God will turn this situation around. And as they do, they'll see. That witnesses to them more powerfully than any sermon you could ever imagine. So it says that the prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were open, and everyone's chains were loose. But I, I began to look at this. I, I think of Paul and Silas, because apparently I think this was Silas's first ministry trip with Paul. And I remember my first ministry trip with Cole Stringer. And Silas's first ministry trip with Paul, he gets arrested, beaten, whipped, and thrown in a dungeon. I could just imagine if I had been traveling with Cole and got arrested, beaten, whipped, and thrown in a dungeon, I'd be like, I'm never traveling with you again. (laughs) But in the midst of that dark time, it says they were singing hymns to the Lord. Now, the the original King James says that word sings hymns is praises, which is, I think, is powerful. But I just felt the Lord say, look at that word hymns. I can't, my mind's a little bit mathematical. My training in the secular was as a pharmacist, so I tend to want to find a solution. So I'm thinking, is there a song that you sing when you're in jail? <laughs> you know, so I'm thinking, what was this? What was this hymn? So I'm thinking, and you know, I look, you can look in concordances and it gives all this. And I've, as I was praying and spending time with the Lord, I just felt him say, cut and paste the Greek word. You know, it's got all the Greek symbols, which mean nothing to me and and paste it into a greek to english translator and i did i was actually shocked at what it said when you translate that word in it says i remember i believe in their darkness they weren't thinking about the chains or the prisons they were remembering we're children of god we are the favorite of the lord 
We are the heal of God. We are the righteousness of God in Christ. We are filled with the Spirit of God. And that's what true power of praise and worship is. That in the midst of the areas that you lack, you rise up on the inside and make a decision. I'm not going to choose to focus on what I don't have, but I remember that you have filled me with your spirit, that you have called me by name. I remember, Lord, that your promises for me are true and real. And because of Jesus and because of everything that you've done by in the cross, I can come boldly to your throne room and this morning receive of all of your goodness. All of your promises are yes. I remember God. And, I don't, and all of a sudden, they're set free. I'd like to finish with a testimony. This got sent. Christy and I were ministering in Europe. And, and we got this sent from Rhema Bible Training Center, where Christy and I do a lot of teaching on praise and worship. And I just want to finish with this. This is, I'll read the text. And it says, A Rhema Bible Training Center student received healing miracle during your praise life sessions. She was born deaf in one ear, all her life as a kid, she couldn't do a lot of things because she couldn't maintain her balance. She couldn't ride a bike, couldn't play physical games, she'd fall down. She'd always have to ride in the front of the vehicle or she'd get car sick until your sessions. On that day, she felt the Lord encouraged her to really to dare to worship with her whole heart. As she followed his voice, she lifted her hands high in honor and worship. As she did so, her deaf ear popped open and she was immediately able to hear in it for the very first time. And apparently, it just she went on to say further on, apparently this lady, she was an established artist with a, uh, an established career, but because of all of her physical infirmity, she fell on hard times. And the Lord because, and he began to heal her and she was painting again and glor- testifying of the glory of God and that God does miracles. Because in her dark time, she made a decision to not focus on what she was challenged with, but to focus on the goodness of God. She actually lifted her hands. Because in this, in this service, I said, okay, I just want everybody to lift your hands. And that means everybody. I'm not talking to the worship team now. I'm not talking to the prayer intercessors. I'm not talking to the leadership team. I'm talking to every person in the sound of my voice who knows Jesus as their Lord and their Savior. Just as they begin to lift their voice and begin to praise Him with all of their heart. And as she did that, and as the room was charged with miracles and the glory and the presence of God, she was instantly healed. No one laid hands on her. What are you facing now that needs the presence of God manifest in your life? I don't really need to know. All I need to know, one thing, is is you praise and you worship him. Honey, can you come up? Something changes. Something changes. Could you all just stand to your feet for a sec? Christy and I are just going to lead you in one song. And then, but I, I pray every person here. I'm not asking you to be musical this morning. I'm asking you to be a believer in Jesus Christ. And that means that you are a worshiper and a praiser of our King. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. I make no apology in saying everybody needs to know Jesus. The Bible says there is one way to the Father, and that is through the Son. You know, you can try everything in this life to a degree of success. I know people, they have the fame, they have the money, they have the stunning partner, but they're still unhappy. Because as Billy Graham used to say, there's a God-shaped hole in every human life that can only be filled by Jesus. So if you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Saviour, just wait, if if everyone could just bow their heads, give some privacy to the person next to you. What a wonderful service we've just had. We've experienced the presence of God, and I know His presence, and I know Him personally. And I want to ask, if you've been watching this, do you know Jesus personally? I want to invite you to become a part of the family of God. 
I'd love to ask you to pray with us. If you've watched the service and you say, but you know what? I don't know Jesus, but I would love to know him. This prayer is for you. Salvation is now. Don't put it off. Don't leave it. Come along with me and pray this with me and say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Take care of me, Lord. Wash me clean of my sin. Bring me into your family, Lord. Make me the head and not the tail. Take me from darkness into light, from sickness into health. Thank you, Jesus. You paid the price that I may have eternal life with you and the Father and the Holy Spirit. But more on that, I can live a successful life here on earth. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. If you prayed that and, and you'd like to, we'd love to be able to actually send you some resources. If you would like that, please contact us via the phone or email. We'd love to get some things into your hand. And if you're in the local area, we'd love for you to join us for our next Sunday service. We're open. All are welcome. God bless. And if you prayed that, welcome to the family.